DHG here, and I'm going to be doing a playthrough of one of my favorite games on the PlayStation 3, which is Resistance Fall of Man. Now this game was one of the launch titles for PlayStation 3, and back in a time before Call of Duty 4 kind of took over the landscape, Halo was the game to beat. Halo's first entry as a Halo killer kill zone didn't really quite complete the job. In fact, the first kill zone was very underwhelming. The second one was a lot better, but that was further on down the line. Resistance actually could have been the Halo killer if they handled the sequels a little better and uh, sort of fleshed out all the good things that were in this. And this game combined well, for the online, which you're not going to see because the servers have been shut down since, God, since before the PlayStation 4 came out. Because uh, Sony and Insomniac, the developer, had a bit of a falling out. But the online was 40 people in matches, which was kind of unheard of at the time. The graphics were, were still pretty great. I'm surprised how they managed to do it on the PlayStation 3, given how old these consoles were. And the single-player campaign was something I kept hearing about. I kept reading about in Game Informer and all this stuff, and I thought, man, if I ever got a PlayStation 3, it would be to play this game. And I was walking into EB Games when I was living in Butler, Pennsylvania, and I was looking for a Wii. I never intended to get a PlayStation 3. But I walked in, they were out of Wii's, of course. And so I was like, yeah, you got any PlayStation 3's? And there they had the big fat 60, gig, uh, 60 gigabyte model. Extremely hard to get nowadays, because those ones were backwards compatible. The rest of the ones, including the one I have now, both of them, aren't. But they had it, so I got it. It was $600 at the time. Keep in mind, this was back in 2006. 600 bucks was worth a lot more back then. And I got it, and first game I got, Bet Your Ass, Resistance, Fall of Man. This game has a lot of replay value to it. You can beat the campaign, play through it again, and like I said, the developers were Insomniac. They make the Ratchet and Clank games. They give you new weapons and your new playthrough, all sorts of stuff. I mean, it's just fun to keep on playing, and it's split screen. So you can play it with a friend if you want. I'm going to start this bad boy up and play through the first level. That's going to be the only only level where I do the uh, let's play format. After that, I'm just going to use commentary. Looking into a camera is kind of weird. Little guy, he just doesn't want to play with you. New cat trying to play with an old one. Oh, I remember when I booted this up for the first time. It makes me nostalgic. 2006. Seems like yesterday, but that was so long ago. New campaign. Yeah, alright. I'm just going to go through on medium. It's quite fun on the harder difficulties, but I don't want to have to edit the shit out of these videos. I hate editing. The Khmeran threat began in Russia. The origin of the virus is unknown, but its effects were devastating and swift. In the 1930s, reports of biological experiments began leaking out of Russia. Then reports of villages destroyed overnight. Then entire cities. We feared the Russians had developed a weapon of unparalleled power. The truth was far worse. The Chimera stayed sealed within Russia for over a decade. Then, in 1949, they launched an attack that overwhelmed all of Europe in a matter of weeks. For several months, we thought England was safe. But in October of 1950, the Camaro burrowed under the channel. We had prepared for them, but in three months' time, the war was lost. We abandoned the cities to the Camaro and retreated to scattered military bases and outposts. 
The Chimera had won. I could have told you what it was about, but what's the fun in that? On the second wave of that assault was a sergeant named Nathan Hale. The actions of that soldier have become a matter of both scrutiny and myth. What follows are the known events of his life from July 11th to July the 14th, the day he was last seen. I have seen these graphics for the first time in 2006 was just unbelievable. God, I wish we'd do that now. But not that. As you can see from that intro, this is an alternate history where World War II never takes place. And the Chimera is... I don't believe it's a virus, but it's a, certainly a different organism life form that took hold in Russia and then moved westward. Basically taking control of the world island. They're some ugly sons of bitches. They did such a good job with the realistic look of this. My movements seem a little jerky, you'll have to excuse me, I'm using a new controller. His thumbsticks are not quite broken in yet. I'm not quite sure if I bought a knockoff or not, it looks official, but these fake ones do seem to have some janky controls. If I could pop it open, I could figure that out real easy, but the screws are all worn. I can't open it up. I got two others. PlayStation 3 controllers are really hard to find. Especially if you want the legitimate ones made by Sony. Oh my god, they're burning! Like I said... Ugly sons of bitches. The days before Call of Duty when Halo ruled everything, hip fire was standard and there were no real iron sights. I kind of wish it would go back to that. Everything having iron sights is just so unoriginal anymore.
enemies are bullet spongy, but in a good way. Given that there's no real iron sights, the hip fire is really accurate with pretty much all the weapons. Oh, okay, so that's how I do my secondary. Couldn't remember how I... Ooh! They're giving me the second playthrough's guns. Sweet, there's the Reapers right there. You don't get them on the first playthrough. I don't really like these anyway. But the cool thing about this weapon is you can track two different targets. One with the right hand, one with the left hand. It's just kind of hard to get going. Especially if there's a lot moving around. The environments look a little barren, but this was 2006. Hey, there's Big Ben. I think that's Big Ben. It doesn't really look like a clock. Wait, they said this is York. Yeah, Big Ben's not in York. This weapon's fun, but out of all the shit you get, I can't really see the bottom one. Okay. Out of all the different shit you get on your second playthrough, uh, I think the backlash grenade's probably the coolest. I'll show you when I get to it. I don't think I get any in the first level, though. I'm about ready to bite the dust. Where'd you go? Oh, you... I'll go over here, as you'll never see me. I could have sworn there's supposed to be some grenades down here somewhere. Let's just pull off the kitchen table. Yeah. Take that, British kitchen table. I hear footsteps. Forty millimeter grenades. Yeah. My next playthrough, I'm gonna um swap controllers. This right thumbstick's not exactly broken in yet. This was a problem with the old PS3 controllers. The bullseye. Like I said, the developers from Ratchet and Clank also made this game. This was a series that was only out on PS3. Uh, I wish Sony would do a reboot. Not by Insomniac, though. They're busy with Spider-Man, but if they would hand it off to someone else, could be a good thing. But like Ratchet and Clank, which I just got film uh, filming Ratchet Deadlock, you get a bunch of different creative weapons in this game. This fires a tracking dart, then you can shoot up over cover. There's also some way you can, like, plant a mine with this. I don't recall how to do it. Let me see if I can figure it out here. There you go. I think it blows up at some point, or... Enemy might... Yeah, okay. It's kind of like a time mine. It's kind of hard to pull that off in the middle of getting shot at, but it's a cool idea. Grenades. 
I'll be shocked if I get through this without dying. I don't get regenerative health until the next level. I do think that this is where Grand Theft Auto 4 got their death scenes from when the character dies and it goes all black and white and has the foreboding music. Reminded me of this. Wouldn't surprise me at all if this was where they got the idea. I mean, developers all copy off each other. There's no shame in it, but coming up with something original is definitely better. Not importers and roasters. Let me see if I can do that mine thing here. Uh, killed something. Heard a moan. Frag grenades have their own unique behavior if, if you throw one and there's no enemies around. It's got like a five second fuse, but if they run up to it, it'll just detonate immediately. And here's the end of the first level. Still looks good. For being 16 years old. Captain, do you see in this? Oh, this amazes me first time I've seen it. All those bugs moving around. And then watch when they like go into his cheek. His skin moves. That's the intro. Exactly how Hale was infected by the Camaran virus. Our only clue is a journal entry recovered from the body of a U.S. medic. It says that he encountered a number of comatose soldiers in a dry creek bed. One of the soldiers, a sergeant, suddenly woke up. Unlike the other soldiers, his body had no wounds at all. The sergeant refused any kind of medical examination, insisting on catching up to the rest of the company. If that sergeant was in fact Nathan Hale, then he remains the only known person to wake up after being infected. Whether the Camaran virus mutated within him, or whether his body had an innate resistance to it, remains a mystery. Alright, some of these levels are pretty short, but I'm going to try to divide them up, keep them around 10 minutes or so apiece. I hate trying to download 14 gigabyte files. It takes forever. Later.